All right, and our final speaker for this session will be Lorraine Clark. So I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me here today. Uh, the title of my talk is A Drosophila Model of Essential Tremor, and this uh, work was funded by the National Institutes of Health. So essential tremor is one of the most common movement disorders with a prevalence at age greater than 40 years, estimated to be 4%, and up to 20% in the oldest old. It is a chronic progressive neurological disorder, and clinically it is characterized by the presence of a kinetic tremor in the hands or arms, which can be uh, progress to become more severe and affect other body regions, including the upper trunk and the head. Non-motor um, non manifestations can also include neuropsychiatric manifestations, which inc can include depression, anxiety, and uh, cognitive decline. Currently, the underlying etiological factors are not well understood, and um, uh, with that, the disease mechanisms have not really been studied. Shown here are some examples of hand-drawn spirals, which is one of the methods used in the rating of essential tremor um, by, ne by neurologists. And we have here on the uh, left-hand panel a normal spiral drawn by an unaffected individual, an individual with mild essential tremor in the center, and an example of a spiral from a, an individual with severe essential tremor. So recent mechanistic studies suggest a role for the cerebellum in the pathophysiology um, of the central tremor, and evidence for a role for the cerebellum in this disorder um, comes from uh, clinical studies which consistently identify cerebellar signs in ET patients, which can also include um, eye movement um, abnormalities and gait ataxia. Neuroimaging studies and also um, neuropathological studies which have identified an array of changes in the cerebellar cortex, which primarily involve Purkinje cells and um, surrounding neuronal populations, including basket cells. And so, as shown here, are some examples of um, some of the neuropathological findings from essential tremor patients, where you see these axonal swellings and axonal degeneration um, in postmortem brain tissue from ET patients, as well as um, later on in the disease, in late stages, this basket cell remodeling and eventual Purkinje cell death. In terms of genetic factors, uh, both family studies and twin studies provide strong evidence for a genetic contribution to essential tremor. And there have been a number of approaches in the last uh, decade or more to identify genes for essential tremor, including linkage studies, which have led to the identification of uh, three loci, uh, candidate gene studies, and genome-wide association studies, which have identified risk factors in uh, the LINGO1 and SLC1A2 genes. More recently, we and others have used whole exome sequencing in early onset to central tremor families to identify genes. So we recently published this study, which describes whole exome sequencing in 37 early onset essential tremor families with an autosomal dom dominant mode of inheritance. And we identified candidate genes for follow-up functional studies in five families. In one of the families, we identified a mutation in a voltage-gated potassium channel termed KCNS2 or KV9.2, uh, which was present in this family shown here um, with uh, the mutation segregating um, with the disease. This mutation um, results in a substitution of a highly conserved, evolutionarily conserved amino acid asparagine residue at amino acid 379 to a glutamine residue. And protein modeling shows that uh, this substitution alters the molecular surface electrostatic potential and introduces a hydrogen bond that is absent from the, the wild-type protein. In terms of evidence for a pathogenicity, three in silico prediction programs, probably on SIFT and mutation taster, predict that um, the effect of this variant is deleterious and damaging to the structure and function of the protein. And the variant is very rare. It's absent from um, po population databases, uh, including a 1,000 genomes, um, the exome and the Exome Aggregation Consortium. The schematic of the uh, KCNS2 protein uh, shows uh, the location of our mutation of interest. So what does uh, this uh, potassium channel do? It's an electrically silent uh, potassium channel alpha subunit that is uh, selectively and highly expressed only in your brain. 
It modulates the activity of mammalian KV2.1, which um, is also equivalent to Drosophila shab, and uh, mammalian KV2.2 by forming uh, heteromultimers. Co-localization and expression of um, KV9.2 together with the other KV2 channels has been observed in several brain regions, including Purkinje and granular cells in the cerebellum, and this work has mostly been shown um, in mouse expression studies. The KV9.2 shows high homology to Drosophila shab with 42% amino acid identity and 63% um, amino acid similarity. The KV2 channels are the major contributor of the delayed rectifier current, and they play a role in regulating membrane excitability and synaptic transmission, and are thought to be important for motor control and other neuronal network functions. So there have been a number of um, st previous studies that have, um, have described the phenotype of uh, the Drosophila sharp mutants. This is a classical um, channel discovered many years ago. These uh, mutations are, are mostly loss of function, domine dominant negative mutations, and have been shown to affect synaptic transmission, action potential, and regulation of synaptic activity, uh, larval locomotory behavior, and neuron projection morphogenesis. So uh, to determine um, the disease mechanism for um, the, the mutation that we identified in our essential tremor family, and uh, further our understanding of the pathophysiology of ET, we have generated um, transgenic flies that overexpress the wild type form of KV9.2 or KCS, KCNS2, or uh, the mutant uh, form of the channel um, with the same mutation that we identified in our ET family. So the wild type um, KCNS2 or mutant KCNS2 is cloned into Drosophila PPDUAS uh, vector injected into uh, blastoderm, blastoderm stage Drosophila to generate uh, transgenic lines. We use the GAL4 UAS system for directed gene expression and um, ex overexpressed um, this channel, uh, restricting expression to uh, motor neurons using an OK6 GAL4 driver or pan, uh, pan neuronally um, with ELAV GAL4. So initially, to characterize um, these lines, we uh, search for behavioral manifestations of nervous system dysfunction using standard assays, including um, climbing assays to assess motor function, lifespan assays to assess aging, abnormal wing posture and behavior analysis, which is, uh, which is a phenotype that has been described in um, many Drosophila neurodegenerative models and anesthetization-induced leg-shaking behavior, which is a phenotype that has been described in the hyper-excitable mutants, um, Shab and Shaker. And then finally, electrophysiology to assess neuron activity. So we did not observe significant differences in motor function at day one using climbing assays or in um, survival. But we do... We do observe abnormal wing posture with an onset uh, 7 to 21 days uh, post occlusion um, in lines overexpressing either the wild type or mutant form of KCNS2 um, produce this elevated uh, wing phenotype. And you can see in the videos shown here, where in the left hand uh, panel, um, we've overexpressed the wild type channel in panneuronally and in the right hand panel in, in motor neurons. We quantified abnormal wing posture at day 14, and we see significant differences um, both in lines overexpressing the wild type or mutant form of the channel, um, either pan neuronally or in motor neurons compared to wild type flies. So previous studies have also shown that um, the hyperexcitable mutants, Shab and uh, Shaker, um, when, ex when exposed to moderate orthonesthetization, undergo leg shaking, twitching antennae, and, um, and a pulsation of the abdomen. And uh, we observed a similar phenotype in our flies over expressing um, the wild type or mutant channel, uh, suggesting that these flies were displaying abnormal potassium currents and action potentials. You can see in the upper panel, these are flies over expressing uh, the wild type of mutant channel compared to control flies on the bottom panel. 
So to determine the effects of this human channel on uh, sharp current and neuronal activity, we used whole cell voltage clamp recordings and clock neurons. Um, you can see the recordings are shown here. We use a sharp specific toxin to isolate the sharp current. Um, shown here is the uh, KV2 sharp current only, um, expressing the overexpressing the wild type channel and overexpressing the mutant channel. So overexpression of the uh, wild type channel causes the sharp current to become an activating current, activating more hyperpolarized currents. And overexpression of the mutant channel causes both phenotypes, but to a greater extent, and is expected to contribute to neuronal hyperexcitability. So computational models um, of the sharp current um, incorporating either the wild type channel, human wild type channel, or the mutant channel were created using minimization functions to fit the experiment, experimental data to um, this classical Hodgkin and Huxley current models from 1952. And basically what I'm showing here in this table are the activation and activation parameters, but, we, but what we see are significant differences in uh, the rate and severity of an activation um, both for overexpression of the wild type channel, but particularly in the mutant. And um, we think that um, this mutant channel is causing loss of sustained KV2 current, um, and again, contributing to um, hyperexcitability in these flies. So this is a schematic model um, adapted from a review article from Shah and Aziman, and shows um, some of the pathways that can lead to KV2 mediated neuronal dysfunction. So both um, oxidative stress and ischemia have been shown to activate a number of pathways which can lead to changes in um, the phosphorylation of KB2 channels and, um, and in their activity, including uh, homeostatic, homeostatic responses and, and cell death. And um, although we don't have any evidence for this as of yet, this may be um, something that's going on in, in our fly model. So in summary, we performed initial characterization of a software model of ET. We've observed behavioral manifestations of nervous system dysfunction. The electrophysiology recordings show that overexpression of casein S2, particularly the mutant form of the protein, switches SHAB into an activating current, and it, it is expected to contribute to neuronal hyperexcitability. Uh, data suggests that the pathophysiology of ET may involve an imbalance of excitatory inhibitory into neural connections and that um, activation of cell death pathways secondary to changes in KV2 activity may occur. And this mechanism is consistent with the dominant negative or dominant gain of function. So I'd just like to finish by acknowledging um, everyone involved in these studies, um, particularly uh, Dr. Alan Lewis and Nora Hernandez at Yale University. Um, Ronald Arias in my lab, um, who generated the Tosophila uh, lines in collaboration with Brian McCabe, and the electrophysiology recordings were performed by James Hodge and Philip Smith and Krasimira Sazneva at Nsova. Thank you. All right, do we have any questions? Sorry, can you repeat the questions there? In, so in humans, early, early, early onset ET is associated with more severe essential tremor. Is that your question? Um, I guess I'm not. Yeah. You know, we haven't looked at that. I just showed, yeah. So when we overexpress the human channel, the wild type or the mutant channel, did we see an age-dependent uh, phenotype? Um, we only have, we have limited data. We need to do that experiment. We haven't done that during aging, looking at motor function. Thank you very much. All right, let's thank Lorraine.
Um, so that concludes this session. I'd just like to thank all of our speakers for coming and sharing their expertise with us and all of you for your attention. And if you're interested in more Drosophila models of human disease, part two will happen in this room tomorrow at 1.45. Uh, have a good evening.